right? I mean, I could say solve by law sine, solve by law cosines. But in general, on a quiz or a test, you're basically going to be given a equals 5, b equals 7, and c equals 42. So what you're going to need to do is say, all right, well, what am I going to, you know, how am I going to go ahead and solve this here? Right? What should I use? Well, you might say, oh, this looks like side side angle, right? So maybe it's an ambiguous case, law signs. Well, why don't we just draw the triangle? So if I draw a triangle using my standard triangle that I draw, A, B, C, I get this is 5, this is 7, and this is 42 degrees. Oh, this isn't side side angle. This is, ang this is side angle side. So therefore, I recognize I have to use the law of cosines. There's no relationship, right? There's, I can't, there's no ratio here, right? I have side length A, but I don't have angle A. I have side length B, but I don't have angle B. I have angle C, but I don't have side length C, right? So there's no ratio I can create for the law of sines. So I have to use law of cosines. Now, again, we've got to think, well, which formula should I use? Should I use that formula where we are on the top that was trying to find the side length, or the one for the angle? Well, if you look at the formula that we did for the solving the angle, you have to have all side lengths. A, B, and C. Do we have all the side lengths? No. So therefore, we're going to have to find a side. All right? Um, and therefore, you can see, oh, there's only one missing side, which would be C squared. Right? So again, just like I did before, my formula is in terms of A, it starts with A squared, right? So I'm just going to swap everything for C. So therefore, the formula via my formula sheet is now going to be C squared instead of A squared. And therefore, it'd be, I'm just going to swap the A and the Cs. So this would be B squared plus a squared minus 2 times b times a times cosine of c. So if you look at the formula on your formula sheet, you'll see it's the exact same formula, just a and c are swapped. <coughs> now, the nice thing is, since this is all one expression here, it's going to the calculator, if I was to type this in directly how it is, the calculator would follow order of operations. So, I'm just going to type this in as one big expression, right? You'd have to take the square root. So I'm just going to type this in as b squared, which is 7 squared, plus a squared, 5 squared, minus 2 times 7 times a times 5 times the cosine of 42 degrees. Right? I'm not dealing with division or like all that kind of stuff where that order of operate where parentheses would matter. I'm good here. So I'm just going to type this into my calculator and see what I get. So we get the square root of 49, 7 squared plus 25 minus 2 times 7 times 5 times cosine of 42. And you get 4.688. Does that make sense? Does that work? Look like it? Yeah. Now, I believe I'm going to have to use this answer again, right, to find one of the angles. Agreed? So I should store this, right? I could say that's my final, I could say that's my answer for C. But if I'm going to use this, I don't want to use a rounded answer in my calculations. So I'm going to store this as C. So store alpha C. Now it's stored. All right, now comes the good question. Should I go to the law of, could I use the law of sines here? So we have angle C. So if we're going to use the law, of, if we're going to go through finding an angle, are we sure that there's not going to be the ambiguous case? Because remember, law of sines only gives you an acute angle. So are we sure that there's not going to be an obtuse angle? No. Well, what about if I chose to find angle B because that's going to be the largest angle? So could I maybe do it that way? Well, why don't we, if anybody feels ambitious, why don't we go ahead and do it both ways and see if they're correct, see if they work? So why don't we do, now let's say you're a little bit conservative. You're like, you know what? Ms. McLogan said, even if I'm trying to fall asleep, the one thing I can at least do is do the law of cosines because I know that I'm paying attention and looking up here. So as long as I'm going to do, if I just need to find an angle, I could always do the law of cosines, correct? So why don't we just do the law of cosines to find B? We could do that. That wasn't that bad. So I have to do cosine of B. That's going to be now. I've got to rearrange the formula, though, one more time. But that's OK. So that's going to be now I'm going to swap everything for B, or for B and A. 
So therefore, it's going to be, um, let's see, a squared plus stored c squared minus b squared all over 2 times a times stored c. Now again, remember, you have to use parentheses, right? Order of operations matters here. So that division is going to be an issue. So make sure you, when you type this in, you're using parentheses. So let's figure out what that would be. So if you're going to type it all at once, make sure you use parentheses. Oh, let's, so let me retype that in. So cosine of beta equals, let's see, that's going to be 7 squared plus, oh, let's just do this. Let's see. Plus quantity c squared minus, I'm sorry, that's not a. Here's a. That's going to be minus 7 squared all over 2 times 5 times c. OK, so I'm going to type this all at once. I'm just going to make sure I'm using parentheses because I don't want to get that wrong. Again, make sure you're using those parentheses. 2 times 5 times stored answer c. All right, and I get negative 0 0.043089277. Is that the angle? No. no, that's the cosine of b. Right? It doesn't make any sense, guys, to have a negative angle. You're not doing anything wrong. You just need to understand that now I just need to take the cosine inverse. Okay, so you do the cosine inverse of the last answer. So you can say b equals the cosine inverse of our last answer. And that's going to equal, shoot, 92.46, which we can round to 92 degrees. Did anybody do the law of sines while I was working on that? See if we get 92? No. Oh, you didn't get 92? You must have done something wrong. Because the law of sines works, so let's do the law of sines real quick. So, um, if let's talk, so if I was going to do law of sines, I'd say sine of b equals 7 over the sine of c over stored c. Right? Yes. So if I do the sine of b here, so therefore I'm going to do 7 times the sine of, I'm sorry, 42 degrees, times sine of 42 degrees, divided by stored c, alpha c. And I get 0.999. So therefore, b equals sine inverse of the last answer. <coughs> Oh, crap, I get 87.5. Well, that's the wrong answer. Yes? Huh? Well, they're not the same. I just solved for b using the law of sines, and I just solved for b using the law of cosines. It's not the same answer. So which one's right? Well, that's the point that I'm telling you. That's what I'm, this is like the theme of what I'm trying to get to you is you're right, we have two different answers. We know only one is right. Remember the restrictions from the beginning of class, right? Sine only gives you the acute angle. It does not give you the obtuse angle, right? 92 degrees is obtuse. So if you were to use the law of sines, it never would have given you that angle, right? That's why it's, so that's why you don't want to use the law of sines unless you are sure it cannot be obtuse. That's why when we did the side, side, side angle, we found the largest angle first. Because if it is obtuse, it was going to be that angle. After we found that angle, we could use the law of sines. Right? But here, once I just find the side length, I don't know if b is obtuse or not. I don't know. So you don't do the law of sines. You have to, comp you have to use the law of sines. Now, <clears throat> for those of you that are still things, how do we go from here to here? Does anybody remember the relationship between the obtuse angle and the acute angle of the ambiguous case? Does anybody remember? Does anybody remember their relationship? 
Nobody remembers? How do those two angles relate to each other? They add up to 180. So if I actually want to find B, I would just do 180 degrees minus 88. And what do you know? 92 degrees. But how would you know to do that? You wouldn't know that, right? You wouldn't know that like you're supposed to do that. Like, how would you know which one's correct? That's why you should use the law of cosines. OK? Yes? Again, if you're questioning what to do, just do the law of cosines. OK? If you feel like you understood everything and you know when to use law of signs, then do the law of signs. But if you're like at all hesitant, just do the law of cosines. You know, they're, like literally, how much faster is this compared to that? Not that much faster, right? And again, here, you're, pro you're prone to making a mistake if you don't understand the question properly, right? The only problem with this one is people will forget to put in parentheses and they'll get it wrong. So you just got to be a little careful. Now again, we still need to figure out what A is. And remember, A is going to be 180 minus 42 degrees minus um, 88. And again, I know I'm using rounded answers. So if everything's not perfect, that's OK. Um, 42 minus 88. That's going to be 50. OK? Yes? 